Here are a couple of normal buttons. They're flat, they're plain, they get the job done, but they just aren't that exciting. But we can get more creative and we can turn these flat and plain buttons into something more realistic looking, something more lifelike, like these over here by using a design style called skeuomorphism. We're going to be looking at how to apply the skeuomorphic effect to our buttons and also cards as well. We'll be using Elementor for this tutorial, but what we're doing here could be applied in Bricks, Breakdance, even Gutenberg and anything WordPress. All right, let's check it out. We're going to start here in Figma because I believe it's going to be a lot easier to understand how this style is applied when we do add it to our Elementor website. To do this, to apply effects like this, like these buttons right here and like these cards, well, we're going to be using a three-step simple, easy to follow process. And here are the steps. And this is going to work for any button, any card. I'm going to show you how to make adjustments for it, but you could do this with any color. In fact, I am going to randomly pick a color and apply these three steps and show you how it is done. All right, let me go ahead and make this more like a button shape here. And I am just going to pick any color here. I'm going to go with the purple. Let's go with this purple right here. All right, step number one, we want to give the background a gradient. So I am going to go to my color here. Let me copy and paste it. And if you're not familiar with Figma, that is totally fine. We are only using this as a tool to help us out. And everything here is with the free version of Figma. Now I'm going to turn this into a gradient. And I want the gradient to go from top to bottom. And we're going to make both colors the exact same. We're doing this because we're going to adjust the colors, but we want to keep the colors inside the same spectrum. I'm going to go to the bottom color and let's just make it a bit lighter. We don't want to go too light like this because we want to make it lifelike and realistic. So let's just make it a little bit fainter from what it is on the top. And then I'm going to go on the top color and I'm just going to make it slightly darker. Step number two, we are going to give it a box shadow, something you're probably already familiar with inside of Elementor or other page builders. So let's go back over here. Let's give it a box shadow. They call it a drop shadow inside Figma. I am going to make this 10 pixels down and then let's take the blur. The blur could be anywhere from 20 to 40. We don't want it too little of a blur because, you know, we want it to look realistic. Then let's go over here to the color picker and let's choose the darker color over here. Now, I rarely ever use a colored box shadow. I always use a very dark gray. This is one of the very rare situations where we can use it, but we got to use it correctly. OK, we're going to make it just a little bit darker. And then we are going to take the opacity all the way down. We want this to be very, very subtle, very faint. I usually leave this opacity. It all depends on the color of our button or our card and the background color as well. We would adjust it. But I usually have it anywhere between 15% to 40% opacity. I'm going to leave it at 25 right now. And we could always adjust this later. But you see, it is very, very faint. It doesn't really look purple. It just looks like it is, you know, the color reflecting a little bit down. All right, next up, step number three. This is the final step. And this is the one that is really going to give it that morphic feel, that lifelike feel. And that is giving two inner box shadows. Let's add our first box shadow, our inner box shadow. So I am going to create this inner shadow here. And let's make this around 10 pixels down. And then for the blur, I'm gonna give the blur a 20. And we're just gonna start it off. We're gonna change it up later. We're gonna take a look at how it looks to us and we can make our adjustments. Now with our color picker, let's go choose the color in the middle of our element. That way we have it inside the right spectrum. And let's just start to make it a little bit lighter. We want it to be realistic. We don't want to go too light like this. That doesn't look as realistic, but the lighter you make it, the more it will stand out. We'll leave it at this for right now. We could come back and adjust it later. But now let's go ahead and add our second inner box shadow. 
I'm going to change this to inner shadow. And this time we're going to do a negative 10 pixels. And the Y axis, this is just up or down. We always leave the X at zero, but you could play with that later if you know what you're doing with your box shadows and your angles. It's all good. We're going to keep it simple right now. So we're going to do a minus 10. That way it is coming from the bottom, working its way up. And then on the blur, I'm also going to take this to 20. Use a color picker. Choose the middle right here. And now we're going to make this slightly darker. We could adjust this by adjusting our blur. So I could take this to 30. I could even take it to 40. Same thing right here. Let me take this to 40. We could adjust it. We can make it more subtle. We can make it more sharp. Also, we could adjust our pixels right here for our Y axis as well. In fact, that's what I am going to do. Let me adjust that. I'm going to leave this at 20. In fact, I'm going to take this down to 12. And I'll fix this one in a minus 12. And then I'll take this back down to a 20. And now we have our button right here. It looks more rounded, more realistic. And we could apply the same three-step process right here to our cards as well. And we can make our cards look more realistic, more 3D. And you can see the difference right here. Here are flat cards. They're just regular basic cards. And then having that three-step process applied to them will come out looking like this. And you can see our button right here as well. Let's jump into Elementor. Now let's apply that three-step process to our elements here. We'll start with our button. Then we'll go ahead and apply something to one of our cards. I'm using an icon box widget here. And then we could even do the same to our inner containers. All right, let's go back over here to our button. The first step, number one, we are going to apply that gradient background. So over here, let's choose a background type and go to gradient. And we're going to select the same exact color. So we want them to both be the same. Now I'm going to go to my second color, which is going to be on the bottom, and I'm going to make this one lighter. I don't want to go too light. I'm just going by my eyeball on this one, but that looks pretty good. And then from here, I'm going to make this one slightly darker, just a little bit. I really do not want to go that dark. Okay, that is cool right there. Next up, step number two is to add in our box shadow. And normally we would go here to advance over to border and add a box shadow here but this is not going to work for this effect and that is because we have to add in a css snippet for our inner shadows and that is going to conflict with the box shadow here inside of elementor so we need to add in our box shadow and our inner shadows inside the same css snippet so let's go ahead and do that we're going to do steps two and three with a CSS snippet. To get the CSS, there is a link inside the description. All right, so let's grab that CSS. I have my snippet right over here. And let me copy and paste this. For my CSS, I am going to add it here in advanced and custom CSS. Normally, I add my CSS in either a child theme or a plugin manager for my code. But for this effect, it is going to be much easier for us to use this because we're going to be able to see the changes live and we are going to have to make adjustments. Now let's go and find the colors that we're going to add inside of our shadows. And then I'll show you how to make adjustments to the sizing of our shadows right here in the pixels. To do this, I am going to use Figma. Now Figma is a perfect tool for this, but if you want to use something else like Photoshop, Affinity Photo, whatever it is that you're using, just make sure you have a color picker like this because you do need to use a color picker to find the right darker and lighter colors and the right shadow color it just will make things a whole lot easier but i do recommend to go with figma i mean it's all free and it's a really powerful tool to help our web design process 
Now here are the background gradients, but we already got that inside elements work. What I want to get are the box shadows that are inside the background here. So I'm going to go back over to my effects and grab those box shadows. Now for this one, here is the first box shadow. This is the one on the outside. As you can see here, it's a really dark color. And that is because what well, we have a very dark, almost black background. So we need the box shadow to be darker than what the background is, where if we look at the same button right here we had to do the box shadow differently so i have my box shadow here and we have it this darker green it's not even that much off but it's just very low opacity at 20 percent so it does change your backgrounds your shadows they are going to change depending on what is the background of the web page you know what is the background of that element and then also the actual color of that element i'll go back over to my box shadow and let me grab the information so here is the color of my box shadow and then i have 10 pixels down and 20 pixels blur so back over here to elements or our box shadow, let's add in the color. It is going to have the hashtag and here is the color code. And then we need to adjust these pixels. So if we go back over here to Figma, this first one, the X, that is going to be this first value right over here. The second one, the 10, that is going to be the second. I'm going to change this right here. And then we have our blur, which is 20 pixels. And I am going to change that. Now, it's a very dark background, so it's not that easy to see. But if we look at the pink outline, we can now see there is a shadow. Let's grab our inner shadows now. I'm going to go to my first one over here. This, The one that is in positive, that's the one that's on the top. So let me grab the color right here. And I'll put in the color. We got a hashtag. And then let's add in our sizing and it's going to be eight pixels and 12 pixel blur. And that's what we already have. And we can see it taking place right over here. Now let's grab in our other values right here. We'll grab this color. We'll put it in right here. Hashtag and let's take a look at the values we have. So we got minus eight and 12. Here we go, minus eight and 12. So we have it and we already got that effect and it's very subtle, but it does give a bit more of a lifelike effect. Now, if you do wanna change it, you wanna make it stand out a bit more. There are two things you could do. You could either adjust the colors. Let's say I want this color on the bottom to be darker. I want it to stand out a bit more. Well, I could go here to my color picker and I could just drag this down and find another color. Let's go back over here and replace this color. And this is why I use the CSS here because we could actually see it happening. And then the next thing that we would want to adjust is gonna be the sizing of our shadows. Maybe we want this top right here not to spread out so much so we could adjust the blur. We can maybe change this to eight pixels and it's very subtle, but I mean, if we take this to zero, you can see here we have that sharp line right there. So we can make adjustments to it. You can see we just go through and we can find what works best for us. We could take it like this right here stands out a whole lot more. This is more robust and it's up to you. What do you want in your design? And this is where we could get more creative. Now we did this with the button, that was it. Let's go ahead and do this to one of our cards right over here. We'll do this to an icon box and I'm gonna choose this purple color. Let's go do the first thing, which is gonna be our background and adding that gradient background. So I'm gonna go here to background color and in fact, you know what I'm gonna do here? All right, I'm going to go over to what we did here. Let's use this as an example. All right, I'm going to use the same exact colors here. Let's go back here. I'm going to turn this to a gradient. All right, I'm going to make my top color just like how I made it in Figma. Then the bottom one. And let's add that here. 
And then I'm going to go back and grab my CSS snippet for this. And I have one right here. Again, the link is in the description. It'll take you to the page that has the CSS snippets. I'll go to the custom CSS and let's go ahead and drop this in over here. Now let's adjust those colors and I'm going to use what we did here inside of Figma. I'm going to go first to my drop shadow, my box shadow that's on the outside. I'm going to grab this color here and then I look at my values. I got a 10 pixel and then a 30 pixel blur and this is at a 25%. Now we cannot put right here the full value because that makes it 100%. We need to be able to make it so it is 25%. Now in order to do that, Let's click on this. I'm going to choose CSS and we're going to use the RGBA. Let me show you this. And it's going to be in the blog post in the link that helps to explain this a bit better in case if you are new to CSS. This is a color code where we can't add the opacity. So these first three digits right here, this is the color code. This is it's like hex. This is what the color is. But this fourth value right here, this is the opacity. So if we turn this to a one, and that makes this box shadow here way too dark. So we want to make it more opaque. So if we put it at a 0 0.5, that is going to make it 50%, 0.4, 40, 40%, and so on. For this one, we're going to make it 25%, which is going to be a 0. 25 that is how you edit it and again this is why i like figma because you know it's a tool where i could get all of those values and make my job easier now let's add in the box shadows the inner shadows i got this color already picked out so i could go here and add in my color and then let's take a look at the values that i have then i got 12 pixels and 20 pixels so let's see here, this needs to be changed to 12 pixels and then this one to 20 and let's get our last one and I'll grab this color and let me just take a look at the values as minus 12 and 20 so we could fill that in really quick. Okay, minus 12 and then 20. So we got our look here, but you notice something. This one looks a bit sharp right over here because this was meant for a button. This is where we're going to start making adjustments. The values are going to be a lot different. You're going to have to adjust the sizing. If we look at all these right here, they all have a bit of a different value because it does depend on the color, the color of your box and the color of your background. But usually inside web design, when you create cards like this or you create buttons usually all the same colors so you would just create this one time for one of your cards and then you would copy and paste this over to your other cards you only got to take time on it one time but what i would do here in order to make this look better i feel like up here this is too sharp so i would want to uh i would want to make it you know i would want to make it more uh, uh, spread out. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to change this to 40 and then up here to 40 as well. And already I feel like that looks a whole lot better. I could even continue to, to go into it, like really have some fun. Again, this is where our creative process comes out. This is just the start of it. This is to help you get started with this creative process using skeuomorphism. And this is just the beginning for skeuomorphism. I mean, we could do a whole lot more. I mean, look at what Airbnb is doing right here. This is next level skeuomorphism. Like we could add more box shadows, more inner shadows, and we could create things to be even more lifelike. The whole point of this is to make it look lifelike, but for us to be able to get more creative with our designs. And I hope this is a good start for you. Now, this is just skeuomorphism. We still got neomorphism and glass morphism and all of these they are definitely trending they're going to be around for the next couple of years for sure i do not see these falling off if you would like to see a tutorial on glass morphism or neomorphism and how to apply these effects inside elementor bricks breakdance and just in wordpress in general let me know inside the comments if i get enough people asking i will create it all right that's it for this video thank you for watching and i will see you inside the next one